David Ayers from Zamboni Driver, an emergency goalie available to either team, the Maple Leafs or the Hurricanes, pressed into service as the goalie for the Hurricanes in Toronto on Saturday night. Gave up goals on his first two shots, but then became a stone wall, helping the Hurricanes beat the Toronto Maple Leafs. And that inspires today's draft, Peter King. The most memorable emergency moments in NFL history. This is broad. It's as broad as we want it to be. We can look at any angle of any emergency situation, just in the memorable emergency moments all time. And you get the first pick. If you get this trivia question right, the franchise tag window was supposed to open tomorrow, but has been pushed back to Thursday. Who was the first NFL quarterback to ever be given the franchise tag? The hint is that he's in the Hall of Fame. Uh... Let me see. Mike, I'm going to totally draw a blank on that one. I don't know the answer to that one. I would have done the same thing. It's Steve Young. Oh, Steve wow. Young. Yeah, I didn't even know he was on a franchise tag. So there we go. All right, for me, look, when I think emergency in the National Football League, I think back to the, the days of my early NFL fandom. I think of Thanksgiving. I think of the Cowboys. I think of Washington. And I think of Clint Longley. That was the first thing that came to mind when I yeah. saw the draft. It may not be the most popular first pick, but for me, that was the moment where I saw for the first time something that was completely unexpected, completely off script, and it worked. <clears throat> and Dallas came back to beat Washington on Thanksgiving when Clint Longley came in for Roger Staubach. And uh, eventually, it was I think Clint Longley beat up Roger Staubach, which resulted in Clint Longley not being in Dallas anymore. But uh, that is for that true. That's true. For that Thanksgiving day, he was the man. And I'll never forget. I never forget that throw to Drew Pearson. Uh, slightly more favorable outcome than the push off against the Vikings. Don't play it, control room. Do not play the Hail Mary throw to Drew Pearson against the Vikings in the 75. You so know they're going to play. Longley. You know they're going to play. They'll play find a way Mike. to play it. They're going to find yeah. a way to. Oh, yeah. God, there it is. There <laughs> Look, it is. here we go. This is Man, a beautiful I wish, play. Look I wish at this Roger show was ready. Look at it's the push. Beautiful. Look at the push. What technique? He didn't even was touch him. He breathed Look on at him. him. He what breathed is the, on I'm gonna, him. Nate, Nate Wright's technique is I'm going to dive forward and flail <laughs> in the direction away from the ball. That's great technique. All right. What's your first pick, Peter? My first pick has nothing to do with any sort of modern reality. But in 1969, Christopher Price really good writer in Boston, wrote this in a book called The Blueprint. And it's one of my favorite NFL stories. It doesn't get nearly enough attention. The Patriots in training camp 1969 cut a defensive back from Notre Dame named Bob Gladjo. So Bob Gladjo came to one of the games early in 1969. And he, he parties with his, his friends before the game. He's out in the parking lot having beers. They walk into the stadium. It's about 20 minutes before the game. Public address announcer, would Bob Gladjo please report to the Patriots locker room? Bob Gladjo. So he gets up, he's half cocked, and he walks to the locker room and they say, hey, we just cut John Doe. We need you. Sign this contract. You're playing today. And his friends are saying, where's Bob? There's no cell phones in those days. And then they look out, and on the opening kickoff, Bob Gladjo is in uniform, <laughs> Patriots uniform, chasing down a kickoff with about 16 beers in his gut. And that, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, is the greatest story of some emergency player in NFL history. You can't top that, Florio. You know you can't, I can't top, top it. I, did, I I never heard of Bob Gladjo before today. That uh, That is definitely an emergency moment. Does your flight back from Vince Young's pro day count as an emergency moment? I guess we could make, I could make that my second pick. I'd never thought of that. This isn't part of a bit. This isn't shtick. I'm just realizing that would definitely count as an emergency. Mike, hey, vote. listen, I knew, I knew that day I had three hours. I knew I had three <laughs> hours from the time I started the colonoscopy prep to the first time, because I this was going to be my second time doing this. This was go. I had three hours. The flight was going to be three hours. I just didn't count on a storm around Newark International Airport and us having to circle for 45 minutes. That is where it got very tricky. Yeah, yeah the storm lighter hitting the terminal too in a very different way. All right, <laughs> next pick for me. And and this 
this is kind of an emergency, kind of. Uh, I, I like it, though. I think of just unusual things that happened. It's when, uh, and it, this is the Patriots again, when they sent the snowplow out to clear a path. I mean, that's an emergency. We're not going to be able to kick a field goal. It's an emergency. They send the snowplow out. Don Shula loses his mind, and the Patriots kick the field goal, and they win the game. And they're right on cue. See, I, I endorse highlights like this control room, not the Hail Mary play. <laughs> there comes the snowplow. Wasn't that guy a, a, a convict on work release? Wasn't that, wasn't that his story? That's yeah, what he and was. It just up, John makes Smith the left was turn, his name. Makes yep. the left turn, creates the spot, and there's the field goal, and the Patriots win the game. Don Shula awesome, was awesome. not happy. No, not happy at all. <laughs> all, all right, right, Mike, I got up, a good round one. Round two. Okay, 1987. It's a strike game. It's the New York Giants' third strike game. It's the Giants against the Buffalo Bills. Jeff Rutledge has crossed the picket line for the Giants. Lawrence Taylor has crossed the picket line for the Giants. So they go to Buffalo with just a bunch of schmoes playing. And in that game, the Buffalo Bills tackle, who's right across the, the line from Lawrence Taylor, the great Lawrence Taylor, is a truck driver from Illinois named Joe Schultz. And that day, Joe Schultz got seven penalties against him for doing various things to Lawrence Taylor. And at the end of the game, toward the end of the game, Taylor and Joe Schultz are rolling around on the ground and Taylor tries to gouge Joe Schultz's eyes out. And he puts his fist, he tries to put his fist through the helmet. But Joe Schultz has been playing World Wrestling Federation against this guy all day. <laughs> and so... He and, and, you know, Joe Schultz got the last laugh. He was back in Illinois being a truck driver the next week. But he can always say, I handled Lawrence Taylor because the Buffalo Bills won that scintillating football game six to three. I, uh, I th this next one for me is one that I can personally attest to because I was there. When it happened, when I look, I keep looking at the title of the draft, the most memorable emergency moments in NFL history. Super Bowl 47, early in the second half, the biggest game of the year, and the lights go out in the Superdome. And there was a period of time where no one knew what the hell was happening. And in the Superdome, the press box was basically stapled to the roof. We are as far away, like, we're the last ones getting out. If there's a reason to get out of this place quickly, we are the last ones to get out. And Mike Silver, your former Sports Illustrated colleague now at NFL.com, just declares as loudly as he can, is this a terrorist attack? Which, of course, did nothing to calm down the people in the press box. But we had no idea. <laughs> we had no idea. But the lights went out at the Super Bowl. And, you know, every once in a while, somebody from that Ravens team still throws out the idea that it was deliberate, aimed at taking the air out of the balloon for the Ravens and giving the 49ers a chance to come back. Ray Lewis has pushed that theory in the past. Uh, it's baloney. It's nonsense because it was definitely not a good development for the NFL. But you know what? The 49ers did come back and almost win the game during that extended second half time that really no one was prepared for. And uh, it is definitely a, a memorable emergency moment. There were a lot of texts being sent. Where's my, you know, my family was at the game. It's, what do we do? How do we get out of here? What's going on? There, there was a, a, a period of two to five minutes where nobody really knew what was happening. So that is a memorable emergency moment for the NFL. I, I'm glad I'm blissfully unaware and, you know, I, I, I didn't think anything of that in the time. I just said, well, time to go get a hot dog. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't know. I just, <laughs> it didn't really bug me too much. My third one, Mike, is going to be that, you know, when, <clears throat> when the New Orleans Saints could not play football in the Superdome after Hurricane Katrina, that was, you know, the biggest franchise emergency moment I've ever seen. And the one thing I'll always remember about those emergency moments is where the Saints ended up playing. They ended up playing some in Baton Rouge, but they played most of their games in San Antonio. And in one of these games, Michael Vick came to San Antonio and he just beat the, the, the stuffing out of the, uh, you know, out of the uh, New Orleans Saints you know, because he was still with the Falcons at the time. And what I'll always remember about after that game is that all the guys in the Falcons are sitting in their locker room and they're just shrugging their shoulders. Hey, hey, it's a normal fact of life. We had to play somewhere we've never been to before. So that emergency moment was memorable because to me, we all thought 
that the Saints were moving to San Antonio right around that time. So, hey, you better get used to your team. But luckily for them, luckily for the city of New Orleans, Paul Tagliabu stepped in and said the Saints are going nowhere. Yeah, you know, in, in a roundabout way, that that horrible disaster that was Katrina helped create the foundation for the Saints to stay put because Paul Tagliabu did insist after that that the Saints were going to be part of the rebuilding. The talk that had been rampant of a move to San Antonio ended, and from that moment they reopened the Dome with the Steve Gleason block punt that's memorialized with a statue outside of the Superdome now. Everything changed. The mood changed. The attitude changed. The vibe changed. The Saints that year made it to the NFC Championship. They would lose to the Bears. But three years after that, they win the Super Bowl. And the bond between Saints and New Orleans <clears throat> is infinitely stronger than it was pre-Katrina. Um, and and it's it, they're, they're never leaving New Orleans now. And I remember there were several years where it was almost a foregone conclusion that they were not long for New Orleans. All right, that's our draft. Uh, is that all three? That's all three rounds. I, you know, there were others that I thought about. I thought about the time Tony Dungy played emergency quarterback for the Steelers when he was a rookie. Oh, that's a good um, one. That's a good yeah, one. I, and and that, I mean, he, that was the only time he played quarterback in the NFL. He was the, the Big Ten passing leader in his final year, I think for two years at the University of Minnesota and uh, got a shot to play quarterback when the, the other guys went down in that game at Houston. Um, and then, you know, stuffy in games, like like the Immaculate Reception was technically an emergency moment, right? Wasn't it? I mean, I, th I kind of thought about that. And then I thought it was kind of like too low-hanging for like the David Tyree helmet catch. That's an emergency moment. I mean, game's on the line, season's on the line, and you make something happen. But I think it was more fun to come up with some of this other stuff. All right, let's take a break. we got more PFT Live still to come. We're wrapping up today before we head to Indianapolis for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. There's the draft Results, I've got Clint Longley playing in Thanksgiving back in the mid-70s, the Patriots snowplow game, the power failure at Super Bowl 47. Peters picks Bob Gladjo, who I'd never heard of, Joe Schultz <laughs> versus Lawrence Taylor, and the Hurricane <laughs> Katrina forcing New Orleans Saints to play anywhere but New nobody's Orleans. Nobody's going to vote for either one of us, season. Mike. No, nobody's Bob, Bob, voting for us. Nobody cares. Bob Gladjo, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back more right after this. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.